And I think this is something which is very pivotal for the success of any large uh, scientific uh, consortium. Communication with other consortium, we decided that it's so important in this field because there is so much, uh, so much going on in the IPS research field that we, dis we, we thought that it would be good to have a, an extra work package to really deal, to see what are the other consortia doing and avoid repetitions and try to discuss with them, with the coordinators uh, on, on the members of the other consortia, what can we use and what can we, not we, can we not use and which information can we share. So I think this is a very important point because uh, obviously IMI doesn't want to fund twice the same, but also we want to advance as quickly as possible. So we want to learn from what people have done elsewhere. The work package six, seven and eight are the main scientific part, I would say, where we, we decided, as I said, we discussed at length, because the field is very broad, to, this, to focus on three different areas. We decided to focus mainly on diabetes. We decided to focus on CNS and neuro dysfunction, with several neuron, neuronal uh, cell types, and also in safety, in toxicology. So these are the three main areas of focus that we have uh, now discussed. Of course, these areas, uh, I will go a little bit more in detail, but also these areas are, are broad themselves, very broad themselves. But this is the first guideline that we, we decided to do this. I mean, of course, these three work package will, will be the scientific core, and each of, the, of these packages is very large, and it might be subdivided in, in, into sub-work uh, sub packages. This we, we have not discussed then, uh, yet, because there again, we would need to have much more input. And of course, we are using the cells, uh, the, the IPS-derived cells, to uh, do essays, and it's important to develop the, right, the proper essays to adapt, maybe, uh, uh, existing essays to validate them and also to get to a, to a given scale. I mean, to get to a, to a certain amount. It's not. I guess it's not useful for us to do something that you can repeat only once. But we need to to gen. We would like to generate uh, methods that have a, a given throughput that can be then applicable for for uh, for research for for broader research. So I try to. I mean, I'm not very good at graphics, to be honest. But uh, at the moment. Uh, we had tried to depict this uh, uh, this consortium, and I think the work package one project management, of course, chair co chair, but of course the the, consortium, the applicant consortium uh, will be part of of the of the management of the project. That's for sure. Uh, steering committee I mentioned before, the work package heads will be decide the scientific. Uh, ways an executive committee which each representative probably will have one what each institution will have one representative which will vote if changes are made i think this is a relatively standard way of governance uh, of course, the Scientific Advisory Board, the Ethics Committee, and an IP Advisory Board will interact with the with every work package, but also, of course, with the work package uh, management. I this decided not to put arrows in, in marking all the interactions because there will be many. So the, the work packages, as I listed before, are exactly the same. The sample collection, the biobanking, the data management, communication with other consortia, essay development, and the three main scientific areas were package six, seven, and eight with diabetes, CNS, and toxicology. And as I mentioned before, a joint academic and FPI leadership for each work package would be really encouraged. So the main areas of scientific uh, of, of scientific focus that we discussed were uh, for, for work package six with diabetes. Diabetes, we dis of course, the, we would try to uh, use the resource of diabetic patients, diabetes type one and diabetes type two. And in, within the diabetes disease, uh, there are many different cell types that are out of interest for different. Uh, of the different purposes for pharmacologically, but also, for example, kidney for nephropathy. So beta cells, kidney cells, several kidney cells, skeletal muscle, adipocytes, sensor neurons, liver, so hepatocytes, and enteroendocrine cells. So there is a variety of cells that would be very um, ideal to be derived from a subset of patients which address the diabetic phenotype. So this is one, one of the areas uh, of focus we were thinking of. And again, the, with this we have few diseases, one disease or a couple of phenotypes and several cell types. 
In the CNS field, we would like to focus mainly on, on, on neurons. Of course, there are several types of neurons, this is, this is clear, but in, in several types of neurons, but then addressing maybe several disease areas, like so there's Parkinson's, schizophrenia, autism, depression, Alzheimer's disease, and pain. Again, these lists are now preliminary. They will be discussed at length, I hope, when we write the full project proposal. For toxicology, we have also, it's a side effect there, we will have mainly probably samples from healthy donors, um, also some susceptible donors, which are known to have some, uh, for example, hepatotoxicity. If we have if we have access to these uh, sort of samples, that would be also very interesting. But then several organs like the liver, the kidney, the heart, the vascular system, and I forgot to write here the uh, gut and the gas gastrointestinal systems. So these are the, the three main areas. On each of these areas is still very large, and I think when we're putting the full project proposal together, we will need to focus even more uh, within these areas and see what this what the applicant consortium brings in and within these, these different areas of focus. So what do we expect from you, from the applicant consortium? What, what would the ideal that comes in to, to help us to you know, fulfill these very, very challenging, ambitious goals, really? So obviously we are talking about collecting samples from patients, so we need clinical expertise in some way. We need to help in selecting the patient populations, as is clear. We need to have access to patient tissues and access to the patient records. Of course, the tissues need to be well characterized, so it is important that also patient records are available. To standardize production of iPS cells, of course, because it's our raw material to have iPS cells, iPS cell lines. Also, quality control of the cell lines. Again, I think uh, I'm personally, and I think many of my colleagues as well, adamant into having a good quality control because otherwise we cannot compare, especially we're talking about a large consortium. At the moment, it's 10 FPA members. I don't know how many people will be in the applicant consortium, but we heard this morning could be between 20 and 40. And then when we compare results, we need to say that a cell type is what it what is meant to be. So genetic characterization of the cells, such as karyotyping, genotyping, copy number variation, and also the pluripotency mark. I mean, this is, is the homework that needs to be done for, uh, I guess, characterization of iPS cells. And also, it was a, a discussion also in an, in an expert meeting we had uh, a while ago because of, of course, the epigenetic variability and the stability of these cells. So this is a very important part. Functional characterization of, as well, because we intend uh, to see how the, the iPS are really pluripotent, so the differentiation into the three germ cell, uh, layers and teratoma formation. And also for the mature cells, because our, the assays will be done in differentiated cells, which are derived from iPS cells, so the appropriate cellular markers. I didn't do, make a list here because it could be from electrophysiology for a neuron to beating from cardiomyocyte to some uh, albumin secretion from an hepatocyte. It could be different, uh, different markers which are cell type specific. But of course we need to make sure that an hepatocyte is an hepatocyte and a cardiomyocyte a cardiomyocyte. Of course we expect experience in biobanking of the cell lines under standardized uh, conditions because this is a, is a main requirement. Additionally, uh, again, I mentioned the, the database and data analysis. So the expertise in data analysis and database for storage analysis and querying of the vast amount of data that we will generate will be, will be necessary and will be very important. Also, experience in cell culture system. This is clear. We're going to work in vitro. Or most of work, or all our work will be really in vitro. So it's clear that we need people like in, in, in FP as well who have good experience in cell culture systems and this but these cells are also a bit trickier so uh, biomolecules that induce differentiation, extracellular different cellular, extracellular matrices, complex co-culture systems and three-dimensional organotypical bioreactors experience in these areas of more uh, complex cell culture systems uh, is, is necessary. 